Hey everybody, welcome to the Art of Comics. I'm your host, Andre Salazar, and today we're going to talk about My Heroes Have Always Been Junkies by Ed Brubaker. This is one of his criminal series. Uh, Ed Brubaker, Sean uh, Phillips, and I want to chat a little bit about this. This is going to be my series called Comic Masters, Comic Book Masters. Now, you might say, Ed Brubaker, Comic Master, I'm going to give you this pitch. I think he is. I think he's a modern master. He's not freaking Wally Wood or somebody, but he, I feel, has a bibliography worthy to discuss and put in the conversation as a comic book master. Um, I have, I'm a big fan of his work. Um, the work he did uh, in Daredevil after Brian Michael Bendez, um, his criminal series, Fade Out, Chinatown, Fatal, um, uh, Captain America he did when The Winter Soldier came on. He wrote that stuff. I have a lot of his stuff. I don't have all of it. Um, what was the other one about Kill to Kill? What is it? Where is it? Somewhere. Um, oh, that reminds me. I need to get this book out. Okay. Um, what were these that I just read? Uh, Fatal. Yeah. We need to talk about those two. Anyway, I got a bunch. So, uh, when I saw this book, um, and I saw that it's got the little Will Eisner winner sticker on it at the comic shop, I said, you know what? I'm going to pick it up because it's always good to read the Will Eisner uh, winners just to kind of know what people are saying is the best in the biz. And uh, I'm a fan of his writing. And like Sean Phillips, they've been working together for a long time. They know each other very well and they know how to work together. And so I thought I would pick it up. Today, we're gonna talk about this book specifically. And this will be the first of a series of breaking down Ed Brubaker's um, his work okay so let's dive down and talk about some criminal all my heroes are junkies let's do it okay guys let's uh, dive into this book one of the things that um, kind of called my attention was the colors in this very different than a lot of the other books that they have worked together on these colors are um, almost kind of an 80s kind of coloring uh, palette and I was attracted to it. It's very different than his other stuff. Uh, if I just grab um, something like Fatal, um, you know, something like Fatal, it's very much darker tones. And I would say the majority of their work together, these crime stories have this kind of tone. So this was very uh, kind of eye-catching. And I said, okay, let's check this out. So let's uh, break down this book a little bit. Um, and I, I should note that the colors are by Jacob Phillips. Don't know if there's a relation. I'm going to go on a ledge and say, yes, there's a relation there, okay? That's just a standard, standard the way it works. <laughs> if there's similar last names, probably someone's related, okay? Um, I didn't know this was a criminal book. In fact, it doesn't say that at all anywhere. Uh, his stuff used to say criminal right up here, or it would be here. So this didn't, so I didn't know it at all until um, until this page when it says it's a criminal. So there's a connection to those stories, uh, which didn't bother me. I was like, that's cool. I haven't read all of them, but I read enough of them. But when I first turned this open, I looked at these colors. I really was really turned on by it. I felt like it was different than, again, what we've seen with this tag, with this team. And I really like the kind of pest pastel uh, brush they're using. This all looks digital and um, I'd be happy if it wasn't but I, don't, I think it's digital and it looks like he's using you know the uh, the kind of pastel or the uh, crayon uh, digital brush and it looks cool and it's got that kind of watercolor faux look to it. So it starts off we get this story of this young girl who is Fascinated by music, you know, uh, older music like Billie Holiday and, you know, Johnny Cash, all these people. And she's constantly referencing musicians and um, creatives that have been junkies. And that's kind of the premise of the title, My Heroes Have Always Been Junkies. 
So this young girl, she's, I think we're supposed to think she's under 20, maybe under 18. There's a line somewhere that says that, I can't remember. And we find out that she's at a recovery place, like a Betty Ford type of clinic in this very fancy, posh um, rehab. We learn about some of these other characters. Uh, again, look at these colors. Let me just talk about these colors. Really great uh, of use of colors. And I do like the way it kind of goes outside the lines. It kind of gives it a little kind of expressionist feel to it. I also like the layers of colors working with each other and kind of on top of each other. So it's kind of fun. So um, Brubaker does a really good job of characterizing this, uh, this young lady. Um, and how she's thinking about the group and kind of sees through their BS and gives a lot of um, kind of narration uh, and thoughts on her. Uh, unfortunately, we don't use thought balloons anymore, so it's all gonna be through these narration bubbles, but it's fine. And um, again, I really like this face, this particular like shot. I just really like the way this is done. And you have to give it up to Sean's um, inking and his style. Again, I think this, you got Sean Phillips, Michael Lark, all these guys, you know, um, Tommy Edwards and Jean-Paul Leon, they all have this kind of style that to me, I think of Alex Toth. That's just me though. I could be the only one there, but I get a Toth vibe. Anyway, kind of what I mean by that is like a simple, big, bold line, small line, you know, a very a good variation there in, in line. Um, so she's in this recovery home, meets this little guy, um, Skip, who's this kind of rich kid, and they kind of get flirty, and all hell's gonna break loose, basically, with these two guys, with these two characters. She's, she, uh, talks about why she's into the music, and it turns out that her, her, both her parents are junkies. All the musicians and writers and people that she likes were junkies and, pro and most of them died because of drugs and um, her parents are both dead and we also find out that there were criminals okay and hence the the connection to the criminal kind of saga so she's kind of a bit of a uh, loose cannon and she steals cigarettes from one of the um, therapists there and gets this boy Skip to kind of go out with her and, and smoke and kind of uh, get into trouble, right? So she is trouble. Now, in, you know, I don't know what history, you know, Ed has with this kind of world, but in this world, one of the things is, is addicts stick with addicts and um, they often get into relationships with each other, which is a powder keg. So we're gonna see some of that. We're gonna see these two people who are broken and they're going to uh, use each other to, to get into trouble. And that's just, uh, of course it's against the rules of the, of the, um, the recovery home, but it's also just like bad to do for your recovery and for, to get healthy, to get clean. Um, so they're chatting here. They're talking about uh, motivation and things like that. And he does some great writing. We do these flashbacks in these black and whites, and we kind of go back again. And a lot of this is kind of a um, exposition history of different musicians, like Billie Holiday, I mentioned, uh, how she died uh, with drugs and um, a bunch of others. And so we kind of, we get these glimpses of um, the, her love for the music while her father, or excuse me, not her father, but this man who's been watching over her after her father died and her mother. Uh, back in the normal, again, I love these colors. I just think it's really fun. Um, I just like the palette that they're using for this. It's so different. Uh, it's visitor day, no one's visiting her. We don't know why, we'll find out soon, but everyone's getting visited. Even Skip here with his lawyer dad, who I guess is a lawyer for some bad people. And uh, he hates his dad like every, you know, young kid. And um, 
she's flirting with him now. She knows she shouldn't be doing this, but she is. And so now he's getting lured into her and they're kind of starting to make time. She finds a, a weed vape. Now here's what really breaks my heart because it's like, um, you know, she's tempting him to, 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 you know, get up to, to fall, to get back on the drugs, even if it's weed. And I, I love this little, I can practically hear him making calculations in his head, wondering if this will be the thing that pushes him off the ledge, telling himself he'll just take a hit, maybe two. And then he just says, screw it. Because like I said, I'm a bad influence and he's into me. This is why I hate liking people. I almost feel sorry for him. Like I want to apologize, but instead I do this. I give him a kiss that says, leave off this cliff with me, even though we're already in midair. Great, great line, great stuff right there. Uh, and that's what Brubaker's really good at, really great, great, great writing. So I really dig it. Um, you know, so they kind of have this, they begin this kind of love affair. She again talks more about these different, this um, author that was on mescaline and kind of had a bad trip. So there's a lot of little information that Ed throws in the book and um, that's kind of fun. I think that kind of adds more meat to it. It's not just about the story, but he throws in these little bits about some historical little factoids and such about music. Um, we get some more background on her and Jake. Jake is the guy who's been kind of watching over her after her parents dead. He's clearly some kind of a, you know, a criminal of, of sorts. And uh, we go back to the, they get caught. She's, uh, the, you know, the, the therapist is busting these two kids. They got to take a pee test. Well, they've just been smoking weed on the vape all last night. And this ain't going to work. She breaks into his place again and says, look, let's just go. Let's get out of here. Let's get out of here. Let's escape. And he's like, what are you talking about? I can't escape. We can't do this. Uh, my dad will kill me. You don't understand. And of course, she uses, she manipulates him and gets her way. Right? So she stole the car keys and they're going to just, they're going to leave this Betty Ford clinic. Um, so they go. They run rough shot over the town. They find an abandoned house. They live there for a couple days. They steal stuff. They're just uh, living the life, right? Of two users out there, no care in the world, okay? All the time, she's kind of manipulating him. So you kind of don't really like her. <laughs> At least I don't. That, I, that's the way I see it. You have some sympathy for her because of what happened to her past, but uh, I kind of see through some of the BS. And now we got these two guys following her. We don't know what that's about. And uh, then she says, as she's like, okay, we got to get out of here. She's like, it's me. Tell them to back off. I'm doing it. So she's got some plan. We don't know what, but she's up to, to no freaking good. I love this background, by the way. That's great. I like that coloring. She talks about Van Gogh, how he was on drugs and stuff. Um, they find another house up in the woods, some kind of vacation village. She finds a gun. She's a thief, basically. She can lockpick stuff. She's been doing that since she was a kid. She um, kind of uses him some more. They use each other. They're on drugs, blah, blah, blah. Um, and we're going to find out there's problems here. And she has that gun she found, pulls it on these two guys that have been tailing her. And she says, I told him I was taking care of it. And he's like, I guess not. We're getting tired of waiting. So they're going to go. And it turns out that she's been using him for a reason. And the reason is her father, her, uh, excuse me, his father was a lawyer for a criminal who wants him gone. And so she is going to, uh, Ellie is her name, but that's not a real name. It's Angela. Uh, basically, she's using him to get the real address to the house of the father so they can go take out the father. The father, which is a lawyer, is going to testify uh, against this criminal who they work for and connected to Angela. And then Angela explains here, what did they tell you? 
and the father figure, Jake, says that I have protection again. He's in jail. Okay, good. I made a deal, found someone Hyde was looking for, his son, with friends, with someone I know. And the guy's like, I didn't need your help. Well, they were going to kill you. So what did you do? So she's like, I take care of it. So I guess now he's supposed to feel bad that she, you know, used this kid, got the, got the kid's dad dead, basically, to keep him alive. Um, and um, I don't know. I mean, his stories are never... Oh, I want to read this. I think this is really great. It's another great shot of just showing how Brew Baker is a comic master. And he's just good with, with words. Let's see here. Um, <clears throat> Mom never told me where the scars inside her came from, but I think I know. I feel it was a thousand tiny cuts around my heart. It's all the things that were done to us and all the things we've done. All the ways we could have been pure, how life was supposed to be. Like a memory you can't quite recall, but you know is there. Of when the world was perfect and all you knew was love. His stories are not about good people. They're criminals. They're heinous. They do heinous acts. And that's kind of the draw to it, right? That's why we like it. And uh, this is very much like that. She's kind of a heinous chick. Uses her powers against people, and uh, as a wolf to sheep, she takes them out. And so, uh, but it was good. I really like the coloring. Again, Sean Phillips did a great job, as always, with the with the art, and Ed crafts a good story. So, this is uh, number one of many Ed Brubaker videos we're going to do. But I just wanted to share this one. This is the latest uh, Will Eisner a winning book. So, thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day. Subscribe, like, comment. Tell me what you think about this video, what I can do better, any books or things you want me to talk about next time.